Hey, I appreciate you joining me today. Kind of apologize for the uh, last two videos. They're real boring. Hopefully this one's a lot better. And I do want to get out from, under, from in front of the screen and get to the weight room, get to a gym, and actually do some demos. And I think that would be, be way better. Actually, I know it would be better because I'm already tired of this. But the one thing I do want to talk about today is if you're going to beat down your body, you got to know about recovery. And I see people as I go. I've been to the Bahamas, Jamaica, Vegas, in the last several months, and it doesn't matter where I go, the gym I lift at now, people come in, they grab a roller, they sit on it for five seconds, they get up and go lift or train or run or whatever they want to do. And I think if you know a little bit more about rolling and, and what it can do for you and why you should do it, you can get more out of it. So that's what I wanted to do today because that's kind of, kind of some things I learned about myofascial release back in 2010, 2011, and explain to you why and why I think it can work for you. If, if you have the symptoms. Again, this is all about, I believe, physical discomfort equals personal growth. If you beat down your body, you will become a better person. And that happens from the inside out. It happens from your mind out. And that's the important thing. And if you're going to do that, you better learn about recovery. And that's going to be really important. So, you hear it all the time. You heard it as, I heard it as a strength coach, I have tight hamstrings. Well, if you run a lot, maybe you cycle a lot, maybe you're a heavy squatter. And for me, with my build, predominantly lower body, I'm a higher-waisted guy, I consider the squat for me a quad-dominant lift. So if I'm doing a lot of squatting, which I did this morning, you know, I could have overactive hip flexors, which could cause tightness in the hamstrings. So if I go to a lot of medical professionals and I say I have tight hamstrings, well, you need to stretch more. If I go to an athletic trainer in sports, or a physical therapist, they might ask some more questions. And I think strength coaches are probably 50-50 on that. So I think it's important to explore those questions and how our friend the roller here can help those tight hamstrings. Because I believe a lot of people come into the weight room and they have tight hamstrings, they roll out for five seconds and it feels good for five seconds and they get up and go lift. And I think there's more you can do, especially as a running athlete or if you've been had previous hamstring issues, there's some things you can do. And rolling does not solve everything. We're talking about nutrition. We're talking about maybe drugs, alcohol that are put into the system. Uh, maybe some type of imbalance neurologically that fire, misfires the hamstring, causes a pull. So this isn't the answer for hamstring pulls. Maybe it's a small fraction of it. Now let me, I want to clarify that. So maybe you're a prolonged runner, an individual that has a deficiency in their training that may experience glute amnesia. So let's explore that real quick. I'm a runner. I have overactive hip flexors. I'm very active up front here. Therefore, I could possibly be weaker in the back. So if my primary muscle, the glutes, is not active, something else has to help out there. And that's going to be the assisters. And that is going to be my hamstrings. So that now is, those muscles now are forced to be the primary muscle. And that's not what they're made for. Hip flexors are overactive. Glutes are shut off because I'm running so much, I'm cycling so much, I'm squatting so much. And in my training program, I've neglected glute activation. Now, maybe I'm doing some lifting on the backside, but am I really activating the glutes? That's the question. And if you do a program that starts with rolling out, and this is an issue for you, could solve it. So the, what we're really talking about here is glute amnesia and how this roller can help tight hamstrings when we're referring to glute amnesia. So I want you to start thinking, if something is tight in your body, it's not always that body part that's the issue. Many times it's something else, and that's how you have to start thinking. So, if you have overactive hip flexors, it could be the cause because the glutes have shut off, and now our hamstrings, who are the assister to the glute, is now forced to do all the work. And that's what I want you to think about in this program. So, injuries to the hamstrings can, I'm not saying they always happen, they can, because again, Nutrition, hydration, you know, all these things go into hamstring pulls. But this could be a small part of it, and I believe it is because I've seen it. When you do the activation, 
guys tend to have healthier hamstrings. And if they do have a hamstring strain, I have seen with a great glute activation program, they might get an MRI, you might inject it, shut them down for two days, and they are running in day three. Yes, the severity of the hamstring injury goes down with great glute activation program. So, prime muscles become weak, so we have to do something about it. So we're going to do a five-step program. Roller is going to be the first part. So this is a vital part. Five steps. I have tight hamstrings. Instead of just coming in the weight room and rolling out and going to lift, I'm going to do a five-step program, and I'm going to program it because I'm a running athlete, I'm a cyclist, or I'm somebody that has overactive hip flexors in whatever I do. Number one, we're going to inhibit the muscle. So let's go to this. I mean, back up. Five steps. Let's go over the five steps real quick. We're going to inhibit, we're going to lengthen, we're going to activate, we're going to integrate, and we're going to reinforce. Five steps. Now let's explain them. Really, we don't want this to get too long, so we're going to inhibit. We're going to roll out the overactive areas. And I don't still want you to roll out the overactive areas. Let's roll out everything. But I want you to do it in a specific way. I would come in and say, if I was a personal trainer or strength coach, and I knew I had running athletes or somebody that had tight hamstrings, Start on your glute, lower glute, and hamstrings. And I want you to roll it for one minute. You can do a single leg, and I'll give you a halfway point to switch the other leg, or do both legs for a minute. But the key is, if you feel some pain or a sharp knot in there, stay on that knot and roll it out. Because the fascia, the sweater-like covering of that muscle, can knot up. And I want you to roll that out, because we are inhibiting it. Now, when the minute's up, don't go right to the next muscle with the roller. Take this thing and get it off to the side. Don't even think about it. And you go to step two. So I rolled the hamstring and the glutes. Really just the hamstring. I like to do the glutes separate. So just the hamstrings were rolled. We are going to lengthen them. We're going to immediately stretch them. If I have a young individual who can't focus, we're going to do a static stretch. Rollers off to the side, grab the toes, sit and reach. Ready, go. 20 seconds. Bend the knees if you need to. Straighten them as you go. Easy. If not, I have mature players. I have somebody that really cares about their body. And they can focus because this is everything to them. They have a bander strap next to them. And we're going to lace up the foot. And we are going to do a great hamstring stretch with that strap or band. Number two, we lengthen it. Then we go back maybe to the glute, cross over the leg, sit on it, lean on that side, however you prefer to roll your glute out. Then we stretch the glute. Then we go maybe abduction, adduction, hip flexor last. And I know I just said those together, but we do one stretch, one stretch, one stretch. So that can take a long process. Especially if you're in football camp, your players will get up feeling great from this. So we inhibit the area. Then we stretch that area directly after. That has to be done in that way. You cannot stretch the, inhibit the hamstring, stretch it four minutes later. It's not going to help you. That knot that you just rolled out has to be stretched immediately. Then we're going to activate it. So why my athlete, why my personal trainer is over top or the client is on the ground, we're going to find a way to activate it. You can do a glute bridge. You can do a manual clamshell. You can do a single leg lift, hip lift. You can do hydrants, your preference here. I like a single leg hydrant because I can coach it. Drive to the heel, legs bent, one leg to the chest. And again, I should be demoing this, but I'm not. When I say up, everybody drives their hips to the ceiling, ready, up, and you squeeze. You physically, ment I'm sorry, mentally, you think about squeezing, so physically that glute squeezes at the top and you are holding it till I say down, down, everybody counts one. We have five each leg. Now we just did 10 total reps, five each leg to activate it. And the key coaching point there is to squeeze at the top, activate it. When we're done, now we're gonna get our cards. If you use cards, I never used cards. I wanted the guys to listen so we could coach on the fly. They're gonna get up and start their lift. You have to integrate something in the lift. So here, my preference was always the shuffle walk. And as I've been across the gyms recently in the country, the shuffle walk is getting butchered everywhere. 
It's not a hard, I don't even know what I'm doing, and I think I can do it better. It's not a hard movement. I probably should have a video on the shuffle walk. Put the band on, keep the toes at a certain place. I don't want to get into the video yet. Get them down in football position. Teach that on the video. I like to go for distance, 10 yards over, 10 yards back. Don't stand up in between in the transition. We're going to fire the glutes and everything that's needed for this program with that shuffle walk. I like to do it within my sets in the weight room. So maybe we will do it, or after we roll it out, we can do TKEs and a shuffle walk. I can do the lunge here with a shuffle walk. I can do an RDL with a shuffle walk. Uh, I just don't like guys standing around anymore, so I can work those things in prehab for the shoulders and our upper body lifts and do those things in between sets. So this is a good thing to get in, but that's our integration, shuffle walk. And then our fifth thing is gonna, we're going to reinforce it, and we're going to do some type of hip extension. RDL is a good hip extension movement to re reinforce it. You could do a lunge. I like the walking lunge. Uh, that's going to be my favorite for this. So our five steps here. Grab the roller inhibit. Once you inhibit that hamstring, you lengthen it immediately. Do the lower body. Keep that pattern. Activate it. Single leg hip lift is my preference. Then get up. Make sure somewhere in their training program you have a shuffle walk. And it's not at the end. It's early. So that glute is completely activated and it's integrated. And you want something that burns the butt cheeks, the glutes. You want to make sure they're activated. So when you do your reinforcement here, an RDL, a lunge, it's fully activated. The more you fire early, it's going to stay fired. A dang camera shut off. I'm trying to put a timer on this so it doesn't get too long. I don't even like watching myself on here, so I know you probably don't either. But hopefully you got a better idea now. I want you to come in the weight room with a plan. And you can use the roller in your workouts to make you better. Hopefully next time, do something as well next week. I want to send out a video each week. Kind of my workouts on the weekends will be posted. Uh, just get better. Just get better no matter where you're at. If you're not running a mile and you're only walking a mile, then increase it a block. If you're running a mile, see if you can push it to the next quarter mile. And that's what it's all about. Just get better. It doesn't matter where everybody else is at. Wherever you're at in your life, get mentally better. And if you get better on the inside, the outside will change and you're going to be a happier person. Appreciate you watching. Until next time.